Corny. To Winslow Christian Fellowship. My name's Colin Points, I'm the pastor, and uh, it's my responsibility and my privilege to welcome you here to our big Sunday. It's, uh, we're having our Sunday service, and we've got uh, a visitor all the way from Bucharest in Romania, sorry, and Monica. <laughs> So it's great that you come. Thank you. Uh, we're going to hear from Soren a bit later. He's going to be preaching. Um, we're also going to be having lunch together. After the, straight after the service, we'll be standing here eating lunch together. And uh, I thought that was the thing that would get a round of applause. But uh, no. excellent. Good priorities. But everybody is welcome to stay and eat, whether you've signed up for it or not. There's plenty of food, always plenty of food. And then we're going to be following that with a Bible study on the Trinity. Um, now, you can, you can uh, uh, yeah. Uh, as we come together, we, we know that God is with us. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with you. That's Jesus' promise. We know that he's with us. Uh, and that is an awesome thing. Um, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 20 says, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. He's a God who we come to. And we should come to him with awe. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let's pray. Dear Father and God in heaven, as we come before you together in prayer we're reminded that we come to the one who made the heavens and the earth the one who designed everything we see around us and then made it you made everything simply by speaking and we're reminded that we come to the one who made each and every one of us we have everything to thank you for as nothing we have is our own it's all ultimately yours and so, Lord, we're also reminded that we stand before you as rebels, as, as sinners who have failed to obey you, failed to trust you, and failed even to acknowledge you. We deserve nothing except your anger. Uh, and yet, Lord, we know that you are a God of love and mercy, and you have given us Jesus, who died to make us right with you, to give us forgiveness as a completely free gift. And so our Lord God and Creator and Judge, we thank you for the salvation you have offered us. Help us to now worship you with all our hearts this morning and all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, let's uh, stand and let's, um, let's sing. Come now is the time to worship. And then we're going to follow that up with uh, Behold Our God. Then who has held the oceans in his hand? Who has numbered every grain of sand? Kings and nations tremble at his voice. All creation rises to rejoice. Behold our God. Let's stand and sing.
seated. <clears throat> Milo. So a few notices to highlight. Um, as I said earlier, we're going to be having lunch here after the service. So uh, that's uh, plenty of food that we set up at the back and um, eating together. Milo. And that's going to be followed by uh, a time of praise and a Bible study, um, looking at the subject of the Trinity. And uh, so that, that, that section will be between 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock. So if you, if you want to do any sections, any parts of the big Sunday, that's the, the timing. So if, uh, if you just want to stay for the lunch, then we should be finished by 2 o'clock lunch-wise. And uh, if you are not able to stay for the lunch, but want to come back for... The study, two o'clock is the time to do it, and then we should be finished at three o'clock. Um, the government's going to send an alarm at three o'clock just to remind us um, to That's finish nice at that time. Mm. Very That's helpful. helpful. Very helpful. Um, each morning, our prayer meeting is uh, on Zoom at 8.45, so you're very welcome to join us there. Um, excellent time of prayer. And, uh, you can't then just pray at 8.45, even if you're not able to make it to Zoom, it means that you're still joining with us in prayer. And then uh, on Tuesday, we've got our Be Life group, uh, which is on Zoom. So um, if, you, if you remember, we could join together the various home groups, plus others who are not even in home groups. It's open to everybody. It's at 7.30. Um, come on Zoom, and we're going to be studying two Tim, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verses 12 to 20 and um, you'll find the, the passage at the back if you want to there's a double spaced passage for you to take away and to mark up with uh, highlighter pencils and putting circles around words underlying important things so that's how we're doing it that's how we did it last time and i think it was helpful um, and uh, will hopefully continue to be helpful so i think is that is there anything else to mention, I don't think there is, is there? Any other important? Okay. Um, so, maybe we could meet Sorry now. Sorry, <laughs> Monica, you want to come up as well? Both Sorry and Monica? Yeah. <laughs> you don't mind coming forward and meet the both of them, because there's a few people here, I guess, that don't know Sorry. <coughs> been, uh, do you want to stand there? Look. So, Good to see you, Soren. So for those who, who uh, are maybe new to the church since you, we last saw you, I, just to say, I, I, just before COVID hit, I had a, an email from Soren saying, oh, I'm going to be in the UK in, I think it was March, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'll come and see you then. And so, oh, that's brilliant, put you in. <laughs> and then it never happened. So well, here you well, are. Uh, not because I didn't want to, but uh, <laughs> well, it was this little thing called pandemic. We, we, we do understand. We were, we were, we were aware of it here. <laughs> we were aware. Um, so it's brilliant that you've come and we've been able to catch up with you. We're able to catch up with you now. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot of familiar faces that you've already been speaking to. But again, as I say, for those of, uh, of us who are new to the church, let us know who are you. Tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, wonderful to uh, to be back um, to see you after these, you know, uh, a few years. Um, actually, the first time uh, we came um, by was uh, twenty uh, three years ago, actually. And probably, if uh, Philip and Audrey knew then what was going to happen, they wouldn't have <laughs> brought me around, but uh, it's too late now, <laughs> it happened. Um, I, um, I came over in 2000 uh, for uh, a master's, I had a scholarship at Regent's Park in, in Oxford, um, having left from Romania, from Bucharest, and uh, it was uh, tough. Foreign country, you mean? Is that that side of things? Or? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
yeah, so um, I came uh, to the fellowship, and then next year, um, when did I came back? Well, we got married. Yeah, we got married. <laughs> there, was, there, there, was, there, was, there was a good uh, way to do it. <laughs> it, it was the, the right way to do it. Uh, so we, we married after my first year at Regents, and we came uh, back together for one year, and um, uh, the fellowship has been um, with, with us, uh, helping, uh, supporting us. And thank you very much uh, for allowing us to do ministry. Yeah. So um, in 2002, in uh, September, late September, we went back to Romania, and I started uh, ministry, well, being a minister for, for church in Bucharest and also teaching uh, at our seminary and college. And I have, I've been doing this ever since. Yes. Uh, and so you're a pastor, you're a, a, a lecturer, yeah. you're still involved re with the regional yes, denomination, yeah. you're still kind of running your <coughs> local area. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I, um, what, in Romania we call that president, but this would be like a coordinator of, of uh, the region. Uh, yeah. uh, but it's it's on top of the other things because it's like a, a voluntary stuff that uh, we do, but we have uh, like a big area of, of the country, uh, some seven counties, as well as two parts of, uh, yeah, and, and Bucharest in, in, in the middle. So. Mm. And there's, there's various church plants, I know that you've Yes, done. yeah, we, we have four, four church plants, uh, our church, and three of them are among uh, Roma, Gypsy. And actually recently, uh, so our Easter was last Sunday. The day before that, like the some Saturday before Sunday, uh, I went for a, a baptismal service um, uh, to a church which is like, 50 miles away from Bucharest. It's a Roman church, and um, they insisted that we have the baptisms on that particular Saturday. I thought, guys, come on, you know, let's be more creative. Let's have it a bit before, or a little bit after, because Saturdays are busy. We have a, a midnight service at church on Saturday, and there was a lot of stuff to organize. But they said, no, 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 we do it on Saturday. Okay, so I went. Out of the 24, which were to be baptized, uh, 11 got baptized in various different ways. Seven had been baptized in the Jordan River. I don't know how they ended up there, don't ask me, uh, but they were. Um, a few um, live abroad and they were baptized in those churches, so we ended up with 13 people to be baptized on Saturday morning in I mean, April. 13, <laughs> but in April. In April, so in the river. Oh, in the river, in the river. Oh yeah, yeah. That that that's important. In the river. So I preached, and you know, like on a um, gypsy church, a lot of energy, and and we we got into our cars. We off we went. We drove to the river, and um, they were planning to for us to baptize in a place where the the water was a bit too quick, uh, too fast. And I said, hey. I told the elder, I said, we need to make sure that we pull out of the water as many as we put in. So let's find a different place. So we Exactly, yeah, yeah, but not on our watch, not on my watch. Um, so we went um, down the river, like 200 yards. We found a place and we got in the water and uh, myself and this elder were baptizing and, you know, I thought, you know, I, I told the guy, hey, you, you, you do, you start, you do the first candidate. So um, we have like two simple questions before unseen, we say, and seen witnesses. I ask you, do you, you know, believe? But this guy wouldn't, wouldn't ask the questions. He started with a story. Oh, I met this friend, this lady, years ago, and, and we were in cold, freezing water. And I thought, can we go to the questions? So he did that. He baptized, we baptized her together. Uh, the lady got out, and I thought, hey, the pastor shouldn't speak less. You know, so I started with my introduction, uh, quoting from scriptures and blah, blah. So we ended up being in the water, freezing water, over 30 minutes. 
uh, to baptize 13 people, and uh, yeah, it was it was it was a bit of an adventure, but uh, uh, it was uh, it was good. It was good. A good celebration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Family. Just, just family. I mean, Monica could come in here. And, uh, yeah, well, she can. Yeah, she can. Yeah. yeah. We have two girls. Um, Bianca is 15, and Sarah will turn 18 in May. They're still in school. And Sarah will have one more year in high school, and Bianca will join high school Maybe this autumn. Nice. They're beautiful. They're smart, like their father, and beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's that way around. But it's <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, we're, we're very happy that Sarah decided to get baptized. So mm -hmm. uh, next baptism, yeah, she will. In June, yeah. In June, mm -hmm. get baptized. So we're thankful to the Lord and uh, we're thankful to our friendship from here, you know, from our friends. Um, uh, we also heard about your uh, efforts to help Ukrainian mm -hmm. refugees. Uh, anything is that? How's that going at the moment? Yeah, um, uh, we've been um, in Ukraine um, twice a month uh, until last summer, and monthly ever, ever since, because um, uh, Bucharest is located uh, not far from the southern part of Ukraine. So we drive, we generally, we take aid into uh, Ukraine um, in, the, in a place called Ismail. Actually, it's a, it's a town, it's a village not far from Ismail. It's called Ozerme. There is a big uh, uh, campsite, which uh, a number of churches coming together uh, um, received, as it were, to use, uh, are allowed to use for a while. There are over 120, 30, depending on the, on the, on the month, uh, but uh, uh, refugees there. But we and we take aid, food and supplies for those refugees, as well as these churches take the aid to the war zones. We don't go there, um, but because the Ukrainians know where to go, um, uh, we we just take the stuff there and. Um, I know, I know it's not on the news anymore that much, but the needs are actually even greater now than they were then uh, at the beginning because people have really no no more savings, no more food. Um, it, it, it is a very difficult situation. Um, we're, we're working on doing some sort, uh, some other uh, projects like uh, helping with. Um, counselors, you know, because um, there are kids that come to this, this particular place that have seen their neighbors uh, being killed or neighbors who could not leave their place, their house after bombing. Uh, <coughs> one of the, uh, the, the guys that is involved there, hands-on with the refugees, uh, told us that they heard two, two children talking among themselves, one of them describing how he saw his neighbor not being able to leave the house after the house was bombed and the, the house caught fire and um, uh, the, the neighbor could not go through the door because it was blocked and basically burned alive. So um, it's kids, children, it's adults who come with very, very significant issues. Our, our church um, has a center, uh, so we are located in the roughest area of the, the city in Bucharest, in a, in a place, uh, area with many Roma, uh, and a lot of these challenges, drugs and prostitution. So we have a, a center, actually a school uh, that provides education to gypsy kids. And we also have a center where, uh, with rooms, so we've used those rooms and everything we were able to, to accommodate
accommodate refugees, and we still have now seven, eight, ten refugees who, who have nowhere else to go, but we've had in the uh, toughest of times when, when people were not, um, uh, you know, didn't have many other places to go to, we had uh, 70, 72 uh, people accommodated. Uh, but I don't know, uh, Romania is not uh, your, uh, you know, best place to go to um, in Europe. So many times, or for many of these refugees, Romania is just a passing uh, place. So uh, they they want to go to they come want to go to the western part of Europe or the states. Or, but we still have people that um, we we also serve in in, in Romania. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it's very difficult, and um, I think as as we see there, because we're so close, and um, they. The danger is always around the corner. Um, the the need to to help them in all sorts of ways will be there for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We we we've not touched on every aspect of your ministry. I know. Uh, I, when I meet with other pastors in this country and we have a sort of um, support group type things, you, you know, a lot of the time pastors complain about how busy they are. That's, that's only because they've never met you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, what to pray for? What kind of things do we need to be praying for you? Um, please pray for uh, Bianca, uh, our younger daughter who will take the exam. Uh, she's not a big fan of math. Mm. And uh, um, yeah, that will be in, in June. And yeah, we definitely need to. So is this a kind of... That? GCSE, I don't know. Um, uh, eighth grade. Eighth grade, yeah, so, grade. So it's a sort of significant yeah. Yeah. qualification. You, yeah. you don't have an equivalent because it's yeah. useless to take an exam in eighth grade. That's okay. why you cannot find an equivalent. Okay. So it's us, only us who do it in Romania. And the, <laughs> the government is proud of it, but I think we think it's not very good as parents of, yeah. Um, as well as uh, for um some some uh, clarifications and you know things that will um, will happen soon in uh, in may uh, there will be uh, uh, some ministry uh, changes for me in terms of working with our network uh, whether i will uh, oversee the whole country or just our region um, and that will be towards the end of May, that will be, so, I, I, yeah, we need the Lord to... Look about the whole country, potentially. Um, yeah, yeah, well, that, there is, uh, like, a, uh, an elections, and we will see, yeah. Okay. yeah, so, yeah. But, but it's, it's all, uh, you know, volunteering, that, uh, it's a ministry we do, we accept to do, as, you know, different, some pastors in order to, basically help the ministry uh, to have a common vision, to come together and to, to find ways to be more efficient because, uh, you know, separated, we're, we're not as strong, so. Okay, well, I'll, I'll pray for you now. Mm. Um, yeah, you stay up here. Yeah. Father God in heaven, we do thank you and praise you for sorrowing for the, the friendship that we have with him. Uh, have had with him over the years. Thank you for that strong connection that was established by Philip and Audrey all those years ago and um, uh, the way they were able to care for Sorin um, in uh, those Oxford days. And uh, thank you that it's been such a blessing to us to know about and hear about and uh, be a little bit of a support for this work in Romania. And Lord, it is such a challenge to hear about all the... Sorin and Monica and the, the church in Bucharest are, are, are doing. Lord, we do pray that you will bless them as a church, as your people. Um, bless Sorin as your minister in that church and in that place as he oversees the congregation there and the, uh, the, the other congregations, the church plants and the, the local network, um, the ministry of 
bringing uh, vital supplies to Ukraine. Lord, we, we do pray that you will bless and use these ministries to further your purposes, to glorify your name. And we do pray that as uh, there's uh, these elections in May that you would bring about the right result, that the right person will head up, up the, um, the, the role of looking out for the, the whole, the, the, the denomination in the whole of the country. And uh, if indeed it is Sorin, we pray that you will equip him mm. and strengthen him for that purpose uh, and use him for your glory. We do lift up to you the family. We pray, pray for Monica that you will uh, encourage and strengthen and help her as she continues to support Sorry and the girls. And we do pray for them. Pray for Bianca as she faces this exam and uh, uh, continues with her schooling. It's, uh, it's hard. Help her to be diligent and uh, help her to work as best as she can. And we pray that you'll bless her in that. And we do thank you that Sarah, Sarah is uh, getting baptised. And uh, what a joy that is for Sorin to be able to baptise his daughter. We do pray that you will uh, bring, bring great joy to, to them as a family and to the whole church on that day. Sarah will be really blessed as she goes forth uh, from that day and that you will enable her to serve you um, in, all, in all her life uh, in whatever way she does. Um, Father God, would you uh, be with Sorin as he's here? We know not just to speak to us but also to support some uh, a church in, a Romanian church in London so we do pray that you'll bless him on this visit and pray that he'll be able to provide real help to that group of your people seeking to serve you. We do uh, lift up to you this morning and pray that when uh, Sorin comes and speaks that he will be blessed just as we will no doubt be blessed by your word that he brings to us. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May, may, may we say um, a big thank you for uh, your prayers and for your support over the years. Uh, it has been um, a great encouragement for us and uh, uh, it has been one of the ways that the Lord has been faithful to us. So uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and also please excuse uh, us being emotional. We are allowed. We are from Eastern Europe. <laughs> um, but uh, we haven't been here for a while. We've um, uh, met after all you know, you all and uh, we haven't seen Audrey and Philip and uh, you know, Dacia and Trevor and actually none of you for, for years, but um, some, some changes have taken place, so we are a bit uh, yeah, more emotional. But hey, Eastern Europe, we're fine. It's, it's, it's healthy for us to see emotions every so often. <laughs> yeah, but for you, not too often, probably. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we look forward to hearing more from Soren as he comes and preaches uh, in a short while. But first of all, we're going to stand and we're going to sing, uh, I will sing your praises. Father God, I wonder how I managed to exist without the knowledge of your parents. And loving care. I will sing your praises. Let's stand and sing.
like to turn to um, John chapter 20. I'm going to read from uh, this passage, John chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. John chapter 20, starting at verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Well, sorry to uh, come and speak to us now. I pray that God will bless his word. Well, there are many things that the reason Christ wants to offer us and um, he did that when he appeared to the disciples, mm -hmm. he still wants to do that to each of us, to all of us, uh, 20 centuries later. But of the many things that Jesus, the reason God wants to offer us, we will uh, try to highlight, to look at those that are mentioned in our text. So what is the reason Christ offering to you this morning? Uh, Jesus, the reason God wants to offer you and to offer us his peace in your heart. The disciples are together. Uh, not Thomas there, of course not Judas, but they are behind closed doors. There were some women, and actually some of the disciples themselves told them that Jesus had risen and they had met him, but they did not believe, still did not believe. We shouldn't be too uh, quick to judge them. Because our hearts knows, uh, know how often we hear things, either when we open the Bible or when we hear it preached or explained. Uh, our hearts are told many things and we are not that quick to follow and to live by those things that God wants to tell us. The disciples are behind closed doors because they are afraid. They know that the things that people brought against their teacher will be brought against themselves. But suddenly, as they are gathered there, Jesus comes between them and tells them, Peace be to you. Peace be with you. And in this text, uh, Jesus tells them, tells them this thing, peace be with you, twice. Uh, the first time it looks like Jesus wants to calm them down. 
uh, because this is the reaction that you have when somebody shows uh, just around the corner suddenly. Imagine what the disciples felt when they were gathered behind closed doors. That was a shock. And Jesus says, hey, easy, peace, peace be with you. The second time, he wants to make sure that they get it. It's not only that type of calming of their hearts, but it's real peace. Now, we talk a lot about peace. In Romania, we greet each other with peace. When we, we meet, we shake hands and we say peace, like uh, shalom. Uh, but you see, Jesus doesn't tell them and doesn't tell us peace be with you as we tell people peace be with you. Um, in Romania, in, in our mountains, we have real mountains in Romania. We also have bears, and because they haven't hunted bears for a long time, for a few years, we have too many bears. Now, uh, I've been on the mountain uh, walking, and sometimes with youth from our church or, or uh, colleagues, pastors from, from Bucharest, and it happened to us, I saw it. And actually, I was one of those doing that. Um, earplugs, phone in the... Uh, pocket and you know talking to somebody of course when Monica calls I have to pick it up wherever I am I have to pick it up even on the mountain but if you're on the mountain walking and suddenly you talk to a friend and suddenly you see a bear coming you shout hey a bear is coming what if the person at the other end says hey don't worry peace be with you you, you will be fine um, I don't know about that uh, we say peace be with you, but you know, it's uh, difficult to, to, to get that, to receive that, to have it in those circumstances. Uh, more critical is when we get uh, well, this news that a friend actually got some troubling news, news about a very heavy disease um, uh, that was spreading quickly and we um, we give the call and we make the call and we, we talk to our friend and we say, hey, um, we are in God's hands and I pray that God's peace will be with you. And, you know, uh, this definitely is, can be very comforting, but that wish that we have for that person, even a prayer, has its limits. They can be very empathetical, but that wish, that prayer, that wish that we have does not have a direct impact, impact on the cause of the problem. The person we talk to will go back to the problem because the cause is still there, powerful, ready to attack. So when we tell people, don't worry, Peace be with you. Mm. It's, it's a wish we have for people. We may even pray about it. Mm. But when Jesus tells you, when Jesus tells us, when Jesus told the disciples, be with you, peace be with you, he did it in a totally different way. Because if you look in verse 20, John says, after he said this, peace be with you, he showed them his hands and his Side. In other words, Jesus shows himself among the, the, the uh, afraid disciples and he says, Now I come back after I conquered your great enemy, death. I was crucified, but I am resurrected. So in everything that regards death, you can be peaceful. You can have peace. Uh, you may meet it and you will meet it. It may come sooner than you think. In, it may come in a more atrocious way than you envision yourself ending this life. But I conquered death and you will conquer it one day. You will be resurrected the same way I was resurrected. When Jesus shows himself among the disciples to give them peace. He did that because he conquered death. He showed the disciples his hands and his side and he says, I come back as I just conquered, I defeated Satan. 
So whatever he, Satan, would like to do, was planning to do, you fear that he may do, don't worry about it. Have peace. Because I conquered, and if you have faith in me, if you will follow me, your, my victory over Satan will be your victory over Satan. Jesus comes uh, and he is victorious. He defeated all the enemies that could have raised against the disciples. That's why Jesus tells them, peace be with you. I've done everything necessary that you experience peace. And friends, this morning Jesus is among us and he tells each of us and he tells all of us at the same time, peace be with you. And he does that the same way as he did it when he told the disciples. He is victorious. He is the Prince of Peace because he is the Prince who conquered death. He is the Prince who conquered Satan. He is the Prince who conquered every, who defeated every enemy, any enemy that could come against us. So we can receive peace. So Lord, please bring peace in our hearts. Amen? Amen. Um, I wish the Prince of Peace gave us peace as he did it when he was with the disciples. You remember in the boat when Jesus was asleep? Of course, when you know who you are and who is for you and with you, when God is with you, you can rest, you can chill. But the disciples, after seeing the bad storm that was threatening to, uh, to take their boat under, um, well, the disciples uh, go to Jesus and Peter says, Hey, Jesus, don't you care that we are drowning? <laughs> Jesus stands up and he tells the wind, uh, shut up, be still. I wish Jesus did that with us too, yeah. but he doesn't always do that. He doesn't always calm the storm. The storm is still on, but what we can be sure of is that Jesus always calms the heart. And he wants to give us <coughs> peace in the middle of the storm. So Jesus no matter how you do it, either you calm the storm and oh, how great is that when that happens. But even if you allow the storm, please, again, give us peace in the middle of the storm. Amen? Amen. And we need that. We need that because there are many storms. Uh, there is this threat of war and it's not only Ukraine. Um, it could be many other countries. I read and hear that UK is among the favorites uh, to, to be sought uh, by Russia. Many threats uh, against anybody who does the right thing to protect innocent people. There are many threats in what regards instability in economical side, financial, political, social, uh, earthquakes, um, big problems, great problems with our earth, um, with the weather. There are so many storms, there are so many threats. In the middle of all these, Jesus wants to give us his peace. And he gives it to us as the one who has conquered every possible fight that we had to do, we had to fight. He is victorious in our names. So we, we pray this morning, Lord, give us your peace. Amen? Amen. But it's it actually even deeper than this. Jesus offers to give the disciples and to give us not only peace in our hearts, but actually when Jesus told the disciples peace, it was shalom. Probably Jesus, because he, he spoke our mind, didn't really pronounce shalom, but the disciples knew when Jesus said peace, he meant something even bigger, greater than just having peace in the heart, calm, the calming of the heart. Because the Jews knew from the Old Testament that shalom was actually the quintessence, 
the, the sum of all blessings that the people of God receive from God. It was the essence of the kingdom of God. When, when God gave shalom, peace, to his people, that meant the Jews knew that that was the promise of everything good, every blessing that God had installed for his people. So when Jesus tells them here, peace be with you, shalom be with you, Jesus, the resurrected one, tells them, hey, I want you to experience a new life. I want you to have the life that I came here to make possible for you to experience. I want you to have full life. I want you to experience the fullness of life. And that's what Jesus gave the disciples. And this is what Jesus offers to each of us. Um, he, he says in the Gospel of John, I came for my sheep to have life but fullness of life. When we come to Jesus, when Jesus is our Savior, when we are disciples of Jesus, we experience the fullness of life. And this is something that uh, it's in store for each disciple of Christ. So if we don't experience that, uh, you know, there is, there is a place where we say, hey, Jesus, I, I would like to experience that. I would like to have the fullness of life, uh, of the new life, of the life that you bring through the Holy Spirit that is, that's poured in our hearts, in our families, and in your, in, in your church. Amen? Amen? So if you are here this morning and you haven't yet received that life, the fullness of life, um, stretch your hands and by faith say, Jesus, I want that peace in my heart. I want that new life, the fullness of life. I want to experience to become a disciple of yours. What, what is the reason Christ offering to us? He is offering us peace, His peace in our hearts, a new life. He is offering us um, a place in the greatest program that the history of humankind has ever seen. And what, what's that? Uh, we, see, we see Jesus uh, telling them again in verse 21, peace be with you, telling, telling the disciples, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And actually in these words, there are some very, very deep, profound truths. Now, uh, John is uh, the disciple, the evangelist, uh, who is very careful with this and uh, always wants to make sure that he, he says these things because these are very important. If you look in uh, chapter 7, verse 29, you will see that Jesus presents himself as being uh, the one who is sent. Uh, in chapter 4, 34, the Father is the one who sends or who sent Jesus. Mm. So, and there, these are only two of the verses that present the Father as the one who is sending and the Son as the one who is sent. What theologians say is that this is actually one of the deepest way in which the Trinity uh, that I hear you will be studying soon is presenting itself. The, the nature of the relationships between Father, Son and Spirit is related to missions. God the Father is the one who sends the Son. The Son accepts and goes where the Father sends it. And now Jesus says, hey, this is the greatest project. Mm -hmm. The Father sent me, I came, and in this movement of sending and going, I want to include you. You, my fearful 
disciples. And I will not leave you alone. I will give you the protector. I will send the Holy Spirit who will empower you, who will be with you. The Spirit is also part of this. You see, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit, yeah. defined uh, within the, the context of this ministry, this project of saving the fallen world, and you and I, and those ten fearful disciples are invited to be part of that great project. This is amazing. This is the greatest, greatest program that humankind has ever seen and will ever see. Now, one of the implications is that the DNA of the church is to be sent, to be on the move, to we are called together. Jesus calls us in Matthew eleven twenty eight. He says, "Come to me, come to me." But in the same gospel, Matthew twenty eight, he says, "Go." You came. You were empowered. You were strengthened. You were trained. You were equipped. You were encouraged. Now off you go. Um, in Romania, we have what's called fortified churches in 1200s, 1300s uh, the Tartars and some Turks and others were coming to conquer places and you know uh, rob so uh, what happened was that um, the western part of uh, the continent sent uh, some people even from Germany to make uh, villages and even cities but there were only seven cities which had fortified walls so that were that they had walls, they were fortified. Now, the people living in villages had a big problem. They were in the open air. Uh, if conquerors were coming, they could not defend themselves, they could not protect themselves. So what they did was they to fortify the walls around the church. And it's it's a great um, uh, you know symbol there. Ultimately you find refuge within the walls of the church because God is there. But one of the, my main, uh, my, my, my favorite uh, fortified church is in a, a town uh, near Brasov, which is somewhere north uh, uh, of, of Bucharest. Uh, it's in a place called Prezmen, a great area, great church. The walls are so thick that as you enter, the courtyard, you, you realize that there are rooms in the wall, but on the inside. Uh, rooms have now numbers, like, like three stories. Um, and during the war, they were used uh, as a refuge for, for families from the village. Uh, during peace, they were used for storage. And A, we need storage because we eat like pork fat and sausages and salted meat and but fat you would love that um, yeah smoked fat uh, now you know that that's that's good you know uh, for wartime times but it's not very good for peace times when instead of us going away going out of the walls we like to stay inside and the church over and over again every generation has found too much pleasure in being within the walls. You know, singing and praying and preaching and feeling good, fe feeling chosen and blessed forever, when outside the walls there are, that there is, there, there is so, there, there are so many people who need the gospel, who need what we have in the inside. So, so Jesus comes among the fearful disciples and, and tells them, hey, for one thing, it's wrong that you are fearful on Easter Sunday. This shouldn't be. And secondly, get out. Get out. And so they did. They went to the ends of the known world of their times. But Jesus 
wants each of us to be part of this program, friends. His program to save the fallen world. And I know, I know it's easy to send the pastors and the elders and those who are trained. Lord, give them word. And I, I hear that sometimes. Um, very dear uh, people in our church pray, Lord, give our pastors power when they preach. And they say, Amen, Lord. Um, it's, it's rude, but I would like to shout. And Lord, give this guy who is praying for us the same strength, a witnessing for you as you will give it to me. Um, but it's not only those who are trained. To be witnesses is a call made on each disciple of Christ. And do you know what? It gets even worse for us if we want to get away from it. Do you know why? We don't need to take, you know, uh, masters to have a masters. We don't have to have a. We don't need to have a bachelor. We don't need to have a PhD in doing this. In order to be a witness of Christ, of the risen Christ, we need one thing, and one thing only. What does a witness need to have in order to be qualified as a witness? To have seen. If you have seen what the risen Christ can do in the life of a sinner, mm -hmm. you qualify to be a witness of Christ. So if you have seen that, I'm afraid this sending, this invitation to be part of the greatest program that the humankind has ever seen, this calling is also for you. So, uh, and I, I was sure God would be much wiser than sending only pastors and priests and bishops and elders and deacons to be witnesses. He wanted to have an army made of each disciple who is a true disciple. So Lord, please help us be good witnesses. Amen? Amen. Amen. What, what else does the reason um, Christ want to give us? He also wants to give us his power to fulfill the mission. Now, um, the reason Christ doesn't give us a new mission. It is the mission of God the Father who sends the Son. The church should be the apostolic community of resurrection that experienced that power that brought Jesus back from the dead to life. And um, this, the church is also authorized by Jesus to spread the good news, to share um, the, the witness about what Christ can do. Now, this new reality for us believers is actually an echo of the uh, Jewish concept of Saliak. Saliak was the Old Testament word for messenger. The Saliak, the messenger, had the dignity and the authority of the one he or she was sent in the name of. Uh, so that's why uh, Jesus um, is always says, I am sent by the Father, the Father, the one who sends me, because he always wants to refer to the Father who sent him, because he wants people, his hearers, to understand and to accept his authority. To offend the Saliak, the messenger, was to offend his master. To obey the messenger, Saliak, meant to obey the master. But also, Jesus uh, says here that he sends us in the power of the Father who was given to him, and he is giving us, uh, he's passing that on to us, but not only on the authority of the Father, mm. but also with the power of the Father, with the power from the Father. So uh, it is really uh, deep, again, what, what Jesus does here in verse 22, uh, John says, and after sending them, 
um, he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. And now uh, a controversial verse. If you forgive anyone for his sins, they are forgiven. If, if you don't forgive them, they are not forgiven. Of course, when we need to work out a teaching, a doctrine, we shouldn't focus on one verse only. When we need to work out a doctrine, we need to take every possible Bible passage and then uh, you know, see what, what is the, the main idea of the Bible. And here, and, and we see in the Bible that nobody can, can, can forgive sins but God. Uh, so what does um, John want to say here? Jesus uh, through, through the mouth, through the hand of John. Um, the, uh, the scholars say that actually what Jesus says in the context is, you will be my witnesses, you will be empowered through my Holy Spirit, you will witness, and there will be people who will accept what, what you, you say, the witness about me, and they will be forgiven. There will be people who will deny, reject what you say, and they will be uh, punished. So it's not that the disciples or us have or we have the, the power to, uh, to forgive, but it is the implication of the way we respond to the gospel. But what Jesus does here is, he tells the disciples, receive the Holy Spirit. And, and uh, the scholars say that actually what Jesus does here is to link our going, our sending to be God's witnesses, Christ's witnesses, to having the power of the Holy Spirit. And the power of the Holy Spirit is, of course, very, very much uh, mm -hmm. talked about, um, uh, especially for the last 50, uh, 100 years. But, you know, watch here closely what Jesus is doing. He connects the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to doing the job. So, and, and he... And actually, if we turn only a couple of pages in Acts 1.8, what does Jesus tell the disciples? You will receive, you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Again, the same relationship mm -hmm. between going and the power of the Holy Spirit in coming with us. Uh, there have been, since actually second generation of Christians, there have been Christians and denominations and groups that again, gather somewhere behind closed doors and uh, trying to experience the power of the Holy Spirit, signs and wonders, and sometimes I uh, you know there were question marks. But what we can be sure of is that the power of the Holy Spirit is at work when we do the job. Because it is not given for us to be superhuman, it is not given for us to, to do circus, but it is given for us to fulfill our ministry, to fulfill our mandate to be the disciples of Christ. That's why I am never surprised when I hear stories which are difficult to except otherwise, from the mission field. Uh, things that otherwise would be like, hey, no, it's not, that's not really easy to believe. When mm. those stories come from the mission field, I think, yeah, yeah, that is very likely. That is possible. I, I'm not sure about it, but it could be. It could be because some witnesses of Christ went all the way in the middle of Hindu community or Muslim community and Jesus did great things. But friends, it is not only there that the power of the Holy Spirit um, is offered, but it is offered to each group of believers, to each believer who takes the mandate of being a witness to Christ seriously. And even that when we are gathered, we are gathered here for, for a short time. I hope this morning won't be, won't be too long because of the preacher. But we are gathered on Sundays for a short time. 
but actually the DNA says that we should always be on the move. We stop to gather, to encourage one another, to hear from God, to strengthen our faith, to equip ourselves, but we are on the move. And even if we stay more at home than you, we used to, we are on the move when we find, when we use every opportunity to witness for Christ. Firstly, with our lives, and if necessary, with our words. But we are always on the move, and we, if we are on the move, then the power of the Holy Spirit will be with us, and we need that. Yeah. Because I think that this generation um, has has lost, you know, that that passion and the strength and the power in prayer, in praying, in preaching, in serving, in witnessing. Mm. We have lost that, and it's it's not necessarily um, uh, to. And we, we oh no, let me put that that uh, a different way. We should not look for motives, for reasons outside. We should, we, should, we should start by watching in the mirror, uh, each of us. Uh, we tend to get too busy, uh, too bored. Uh, we tend to look so for so many other things. Um, but we need to go back. We need to go back to the scriptures and to pray that the freshness um, of the word of God will, uh, will bring uh, fresh times in our in our hearts in our lives. Amen. 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 Our families in, in in the church. We need to seek the Lord uh, more. We need to be more disciplined in spending time in prayer and being more dedicated and making the right decisions to follow Christ all the way to serve to witness and that power will will be um, with us. So the reason Christ offered. The fearful disciples, these things, and the risen Christ wants to offer each and every one of us these great things. Uh, peace in our hearts, and oh Lord, how much we need that. But it's not, it's not only heart and peace, but it's a new life, it's shalom. Mm. It's the sum of all blessings that God wants to offer those who are his children and we pray that the Lord will help us experience the fullness of life in him amen amen he also wants us to be part of this great project this great program of the salvation of the lost and we have a place and we pray that we will be good witnesses uh, ready to go ready to live uh, lives that will point to Him and ready to open the mouth when, ne when necessary to give the witness. Amen? Amen. As well as uh, the power of the Holy Spirit that can bring uh, again a fresh uh, time in our uh, and experience uh, and, and worship in, in every aspect of, of our personal lives, in our families, and in the church. Amen. Amen. of God's peace and empowered by the Holy Spirit and the challenge to get out and witness. Let's uh, stand and let's uh, sing um, as we conclude. Let's uh, sing two songs. Jesus, the name, high over all in hell or earth or sky. And then we're going to sing before the throne of God above. So stand and sing.
say for refreshments as always, but uh, also for as long as you can to join us for lunch and for that time around the world looking at the topic of the Trinity. And uh, I'm going to finish by reading from uh, Ephesians chapter 3. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen.